Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, years ago, well, maybe not years ago, maybe one, maybe two years ago, I proposed a fight that I thought would be a great fight. I still do. It's Bernard Hopkins, the light heavyweight champion, against former unified cruiserweight champion and former heavyweight champion David Hay. Right styles make fights. Good defense can actually block a lot of big punches. Right? A lot of defense is positioning. My feeling is that David Hay isn't as good inside as Bernard Hopkins. Hopkins is excellent at positioning. Hopkins would be able to have the same kind of success against Hay that, in my opinion, he had against Jean Pascal. Well, many of you uh, then uh, wrote in the comment section to that video, you're crazy. My question to you is simply, are you just figuring that out? Fast forward to 2014, and I believe there is a spectacular fight. No one's talking about that staring us right in the face, and the fight would have historical implications. Now, two belt holder, super middleweight champion Carl Frotch, wants to fight in Vegas against a popular opponent. Right? He wants the thrill of headlining in Vegas. And of course, as a two-time champ, as someone who just had 80,000 people watch him at Wembley. By the way, that fight shown in the United States got 800,000 viewers. Understand, that's what Donna Stevenson is getting these days live in the United States. Right? Think about it. Well, how about as an opponent the reigning middleweight champion Miguel Cotto a guy who has sold out Madison Square Garden in New York City several times who fought Floyd Mayweather and got well north of a million pay-per-viewers a guy who is one of boxing's biggest draws for Miguel Cotto the payoff would be trying to annex the super middleweight title, trying to establish a legacy of dominance from 140 to 168 pounds. And of course, selling that fight would be easy to the public because Cotto's trainer is superstar trainer Freddie Roach. And I believe the public understands that styles make fights and no one more than Freddie Roach who guided Manny Pacquiao over Oscar De La Hoya understands how to leverage a lack of height, how height itself isn't the be-all and end-all, right? Roach knows how to devise a strategy to give a smaller man an advantage against a slower, bigger man. Let's talk about why that fight works. Let's talk about why I think Miguel Cotto would win that fight. <clears throat> Carl Frotch, for all of his game, and he has significant game, isn't as good on the inside as Miguel Cotto. Folks, it's not close. Right? Carl Frotch, think about it. When's the last time you saw Carl Frotch wrestling with someone on the inside? side. When? Carl Frotch has an excellent jab. He's fought a group of men who want to stay outside and trade with him. Right? George Groves came in, had his hand like this, was trying to catch shots. Right? 
but was an up on Carl trying to put a shoulder on him or throw left hooks to the body. Right? When Groves, as I said in the post fight video here, started throwing the jab to the body, he had success. I don't think Carl Frotch ever adjusted to that jab to the body. Well, let's think it through. <clears throat> I would argue that Miguel Cotto's best weapon is a short, compact left hook to the body. Right? I would argue that just like Mike Tyson, a shorter guy, ran roughshod through the heavyweight division in the 1980s by ducking jabs, getting inside, and working guys over. I would argue that Cotto, with the superior foot speed to Carl Frotch, could duck his jab, could get inside, and could exploit the problems Carl Frotch has in dealing with left hands to the body. I would argue, too, that since Cotto is a excellent body puncher, that left to the body is beautiful, right? That would actually make the height gap something that favors Cotto. Think of it this way, right? Carl Frotch doesn't hide his upper body. It's there to be hit. Since Cotto's not a headhunter, Cotto wouldn't have to spend a lot of time trying to throw high punches at Carl's head. Right? Cotto could literally focus on Carl's body. Right? Carl stands mainly upright. He's not a croucher. And, of course, if Cotto starts to come inside and notices that after hitting Carl in the body a few times, Carl now is crouching down, Cotto is a master at changing the trajectory on that left hand and having it hit his opponent up top. In sum, what you have is a big man who doesn't throw his weight around in the ring, right? Carl's not physical on the inside, right? He's not Chavez Jr., who does make his weight an issue. Right, with Carl, Carl never makes the 168 pounds he has an issue because he's trying to beat you with a jab, with an uppercut, with a straight right hand from outside. A guy who can get inside and who can bounce and move like Kodo, I believe would finish Carl's ribcage and then would take Carl Frotch out, right? Understand, Carl would have the harder time finding Cotto than Cotto would have finding Carl Frotch. Now, I'll agree. Cotto would get hit with the hardest punches of his career. No question about it. Right? But ask yourselves, does Carl throw the kind of volume, non-stop power punches of an Antonio Margarito? Right? That first Cotto Margarito fight, too, has the question of whether or not, and keep in mind, this is post, as we look back, post Antonio Margarito getting caught with Pastor of Paris or something like that, ingredients in his gloves before the Shane Mosley fight. Right? The question is, were Margarito's gloves clean for the first Cotto fight? Right? Looking at Tony's face, not Tony's face, but Miguel's face after that fight, that's an open question. Right? And so, if Carl Frotch comes in here with clean gloves, right, clean gloves, 
without the hand speed of Manny Pacquiao, who also deconstructed Cotto. Right? With Cotto having Roach in his corner. Not Pedro Diaz or the trainers who guided him to the Austin Trout loss. If Cotto's using his legs more and is moving just a bit faster against a guy who can't catch him, right? Wouldn't Cotto have a chance of lifting the 168-pound title? I'm telling you, the most thrilling part of the Cotto Martinez fight is how after Cotto hits Martinez and Martino um, and Martinez who has good foot speed is dazed look at how Cotto follows up after big left hands right he hits Martinez then he moves in on Martinez he's on top of Martinez the movement is stellar what does Carl Frotch have that would allow him to deal with that kind of movement? Revisit the film of Frotch against Andre Ward. You're going to notice there's several times in that fight. Now keep in mind, Ward, we now know, is fighting that fight with a bad right shoulder. Right? That shoulder's been operated on. Watch Ward's left hand. Notice how Ward times an entry point repeatedly where he jumps inside after Carl Frotch has thrown a punch and hits Carl with counter left hands inside. Can't this version of Miguel Cotto do just that? So to the Frotch people, let me say this. I think it's a great fight. I think Frotch would be favored. I think interest in the fight would be at a fevered pitch. I think it's an easy sell to the public. Freddie Roach can talk about the similarities between Pacquiao versus De La Hoya. Right? An argument can be made if you're a Manny Pacquiao fan that that fight is Pacquiao's best moment. Right? The hand speed that night is dazzling. Right, Frotch would be able, excuse me, Roach would be able to make the case that this fight, Cotto Frotch, is that fight, Pacquiao De La Hoya. Right, I think it's fascinating. I think Frotch's tendency not to fight inside neutralizes the weight gap tremendously. I think Miguel Cotto's ability to tuck his head and dodge it and Frotch's hesitancy to open up would make Cotto hard to find and I don't care how big you are we've seen Cotto's punch carries well at 160 wasn't that Sergio Martinez on the canvas three times in the first round of that fight I know there's an eight pound gap between 160 and 168 but I'm just telling you Cotto's punch looks so good at 160 that one wonders what happens if he hits Carl Frotch several times in the ribs at 168 let's also say this too Cotto has stamina Cotto has gone 12 rounds in many tough fights so, the fight sounds preposterous. I understand Carl Frotch's top goal right now is to fight Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Chavez Jr., of course, has differences of opinion with top rank. I hope the Cotto people, excuse me, I hope the Frotch people realize that Chavez Jr. is a very tough opponent, no matter what his training problems, right? Roach claims he only trained five days for the Sergio Martinez fight. Right? The Frotch people, if they have problems with that Chavez Jr. negotiation, might want to think about Miguel Cotto. I think that's a mega fight. Should Cotto 
win that fight. You're talking about a guy who would have been champion from 140 to 168. Should Carl Frotch win that fight? Let's think it through. He gets introduced to the American public and of course he'd still have in the front view mirror fights against Chavez Jr. if he wants it. Right? As well as fights against others in his own division. DeGale, Ward, etc. Right? So, um, I think Cotto Frotch, as crazy as it sounds, and look, I've looked crazy here online before, but I think Cotto Frotch, that's a good fight. That's a great fight. Let me say this, too. Cotto right now has a lot of options. Fighting a guy for his title at 168 still leaves you with your title. This is an opportunity to get a big payday without placing your title at risk. You win this fight, your reputation's even bigger. You lose this fight, then you could say, hey, I went for the biggest guy I could find. Now I'm getting back to my division to defend my title. Right? This career path carries less risk for Cotto than actually defending the middleweight title out the gate. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com and don't limit the discussion to just Cotto versus Frotch. If you feel Cotto should take another career path, Possibly fight Mayweather for the title at 160. Possibly start the process of trying to unify the title with an eye on fighting Gennady Golovkin. Possibly calling out the winner of Saul Alvarez, Everslandy Lara. Cotto has many options. Tell us which option you think he should take here in the comment section to this video on YouTube. Thanks for indulging me. Thanks for stopping by.